at least your flash is inside the museum. Inside the Sistine Chapel, you'll have to turn off everything. And the reason being for that is uh, when they were cleaning the Sistine Chapel in the 1990s, part of the cleanings of the Sistine Chapel was funded by a Japanese television production company who now own the copyrights to the Sistine Chapel for the next few years. So it's more of a copyright issue. Uh, so videos can be used inside the Sistine Chapel as well. Once we get inside the church, at that time you can turn all of your cameras and video cameras and your flashes inside the church. Um, any of the artworks that you can damage by flashes has actually been taken out of the, the basilica and replaced with glass mosaic copies. So any of the artwork that you can see inside St. Peter's Basilica is actually not the original, but the glass mosaic copies. So just little tiny pieces of glass forming these beautiful, gigantic uh, pictures inside the basilica. Okay, um, let's talk about, let's do an easy one first. Anybody know where the Pope lives? You want to point it out? There. I like when people go. <laughs> it's right over there, actually right across the, um, the courtyard here, the piazza. That big gray building over there is uh, the Apostolic Palace. Second uh, window on the top floor from the right is where the office is. That's where he comes out when he's in town. He's been in Sydney, Australia. Uh, is he still there? As far as I know, I think he's still there. I haven't turned the TV in a day. <laughs> but uh, when he, here in, he is here in town, on Sundays, he comes out from that window. So generally, a lot of times you'll see him on TV from that window. Um, every Sunday from about 12 o'clock to 12.15, he does a nice benediction or blessing for the crowd in about uh, six different languages. Uh, at 12.15, since he's very precise, each family from the United States. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, guys. Yes. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Okay. Just getting started. Um, my name is Kathy. Nice to meet you. Okay. We've talked about, we're just talking about uh, where the Apostolic Palace is, where the Pope is. The first thing I started talking about, Debbie, and Mrs. Deborah, and Mrs. signed up here, have a seat. Um, we're going to get inside. I'll explain everything what we're doing once I recap for the tour. for a blessing for the people who come inside the square. Uh, watch the Pope. You can come inside the square, actually. Uh, you have to go through security. Now, on Wednesday, he does a papal mass for the group as well. When he's in town, you see right where the top of the steps are, he comes out, does a nice mass uh, for the groups that people that come inside St. Peter's Square. Okay? Now, where he comes out when he's newly elected Pope, uh, is not that window over there, but at St. Peter's Basilica, uh, you'll see those um, the facade on the front. That middle window has some red marble to the left and right hand side. That is where the Pope is introduced when he becomes Pope. Where does conclave, that ceremony to elect a Pope, where does that take place? Anybody remember? We're going to go see it today. Michael Andrew Panasili. Sistine Chapel, okay? Sistine Chapel, you're going to do it. Sistine Chapel is where we're going to head today inside the Vatican Museum. We're going to go to the Vatican Museum, do a highlight tour there, and head out to the Sistine Chapel. You can actually see the Sistine Chapel from the piazza. Take a look at St. Peter Basilica. Just to the right-hand side, you see a nice pitched roof, okay? That is the Sistine Chapel. You will not see the, uh, what is it called? The <laughs> chimney coming out, because they only put the chimney up during conclave. Inside the Sistine Chapel, there's no fireplace to burn those ballots, uh, but they actually uh, have a stove that they bring inside. I'll show you all where that is inside the Sistine Chapel. Uh, again, once we get inside St. Peter's, uh, the Vatican Museum and the Sistine Chapel, we have headsets, so you'll hear me properly. Um, so Pope Benedict XVI is our current pope. Which country is he from? Germany. Germany. What was the pope? Who was the pope before him? Pope John Paul. John Paul the Second. Would you all do me a favor? Uh, if we all scoot in just a little bit, that way uh, 
um, I'll, put, I'll save my voice just a bit before we get our headset. Okay. There's a lot of smoke right now, so it's kind of like it. Thank you. Pope John Paul II, what country was he from? Poland. Poland. So he was our Polish Pope. Can you move your eyes a little bit farther to the left hand side? Yeah. Uh, glass building. Right uh, on the end of that building, we have a big red brick facade. Okay? On the end of that red brick facade, you see a woman in blue, I think, mm. holding no. a baby. Yeah, it's and it's called the Madonna of the Colonnades. Okay? That's the only thing we added to this square in the last 150 years. Okay? Uh, one thing, I'll give you a hint. It was added by Pope John Paul II. Uh, after May 1981, what happened to Pope John Paul II in May 1981? Anybody remember? He was shot. There's attempted assassination on his life. There's two bullets that entered his chest. One, uh, one of the bullets was millimeters. He made an artery to his heart. He was in a six-hour surgery to get those bullets out of his chest. When he got one of those bullets out of his chest, when he recovered, he actually sent one of those bullets to a hospital in Portugal. The prayers from that hospital helped in saving his life. You might have heard of this. The other bullet, tour guide legend says, I've never seen this written down, so I always say it's tour guide legend. It says that when he recovered, he came back to the square, added the Madonna of the Colonnades up there as a way of protecting the square, and then lodged the other bullet in the crown of the Madonna of the Colonnades up there. Then dedicated the rest of his papacy to Mary. Uh, when you see his papal crest, you see his blue shield. The sign of the cross in the lower right hand corner, that stands for Mary. I'm sorry, big M in the lower right hand corner stands for Mary. Uh, around that shield, you see Totus Tuus in Latin, means totally yours, and he's talking to her when he's saying this. Okay? If you go inside the square, uh, go past that on the right over there, right in front of that television, there's a big plaque on the ground in travertine that shows um, where Pope John. Pope John Paul II actually fell when he was shot inside the square. Okay. Move your eyes a little bit farther to the left hand side to St. Peter's Basilica. This is the largest basilica in the world. From the back of this church to the front is about 186 meters. And the portico and the facade on the front is about 193 meters. This is literally the equivalent to the length of two football fields. Okay. Take all the square footage of St. Peter's Basilica, it's about the length of an area of 16 football fields. It's gigantic. If you go inside St. Peter's Basilica, um, I was just thinking, go inside St. Peter's Basilica, go all the way to the back of the uh, Basilica, turn left, and you'll see the original, uh, uh, the original of the copy of the Madonna of the Colonnades up there. Now, going back to the Basilica, this is not the first Basilica to be built on this spot. The first Basilica was built in the 300th AD by Emperor Constantine. You guys recognize Constantine's name? Who's Constantine? What was he famous for? Who's the first one? He was the first Christian there Empire. There you go. He brought Christianity to the Roman Empire. He didn't bring it. He legalized it. Don't know yet. There you go. No, he was the first Christian Empire. He legalized Christianity. When he legalized Christianity, he was actually here in Rome, about the 300s AD. He was having a battle against an emperor called Maxentius. They were co-emperoring the Roman Empire at the time. He wants to take over the entire Roman Empire, has this battle here in Rome at the uh, Milvian Bridge, which still exists today.